One of the biggest problems people in main stage run into is designing sounds in one place and then taking them to another for live performance and all their hard work at home just doesn't translate. Most of the time you can fix and even anticipate these issues with a basic understanding of EQ. So in this video, I wanna empower you with simple things you can check inside the EQ plugin in Mainstage that will make sure the hard work you do at home translates during your next live performance. Let me show you how. No matter what main stage concert you use, you're gonna be able to follow along in this tutorial. I've just got a basic pad loaded into our Sunday Keys template. Sounds like this. And we're gonna load an instance of channel EQ onto the preset. So if you wanna follow along, um, you can open up EXS24 and just load in the basic pad instrument. Or you can load up any pad sound that you've got ready to go and add an instance of channel EQ. Now, channel EQ's factory preset looks a little bit something like this. I've saved a default preset, which is something I'm gonna show you how to do in just a minute in this tutorial, but uh, by default, it's gonna be pretty much flat. So to start off with, I'm just gonna boost some frequencies while I hold some notes on this pad so you can hear how different frequencies can really quickly um, sort of get in the way or get a little bit overwhelming. And I'm, I'm talking specifically about the low end and the low mid range for most pad sounds. So here's a just a basic pad chord. And you can see here on the analyzer how the frequencies are spread out across the visualizer. Now I'm just gonna grab this point on the EQ and we're gonna boost. And you can hear that this has a drastic impact on the perception and the size of this pad. sweep it down into the low end. And then we'll go up to about 500 hertz. And then even up a little bit higher, up to like 1K. Now, that had a really big impact on the space and the size that this pad takes up in the mix. And the reason I'm doing this is not because I recommend that you boost a bunch of frequencies in this way, but actually quite the opposite. I just wanna overemphasize the effect that these different frequency ranges have on how your pad is going to translate in the room during a live performance. So oftentimes the best place to start looking for problem areas in the EQ of your pad sounds is in that range that I just showed you. The low range, maybe 50 Hertz, all the way up to about 500 Hertz sometimes even up to 1K, but oftentimes a good place to start is right around 200. Um, so I generally recommend that you actually cut frequencies that you don't want to hear as prominently rather than boost frequencies that you want to hear more of, because when you remove something or diminish something that's getting in the way of your pad, then what's left is gonna stand out more because there's a lot more room for it in the mix. So here's with just flat EQ. And then I'm just gonna apply a subtle cut right around 200. And the pad does noticeably thin out, but the great thing about this in a live mix is that there's gonna be a lot of other instruments filling that space. You're gonna have bass guitar, you're gonna have the low end of what your guitarists are playing, and you're gonna have all that space in the mid range and in the upper range for the pad to still come through the mix, glue everything together and do what it's designed to do. Now, if your patches tend to be really bassy and boomy, then you might do more of a low cut. So you can actually bring this high pass filter up something like this. And this, every octave is just gonna progressively roll off the low end of your sounds. So I generally tend to actually do a pretty aggressive high pass filter or a low cut filter even up to about 200 hertz. This is my starting point for almost any sound that I work with in main stage. And the reason that I have this set as my default is because I want to intentionally choose to allow a sound to occupy that low end frequency range. And if this is my starting point, anytime I add an instance of EQ to the channel strip, then I have to intentionally decide, no, I do want those low frequencies in there. So I have to open up the plugin and roll this back. 
And the reason I think this is a great practice to get into is because unless it's a bass sound or something where you're gonna be playing bass notes like a piano or an electric piano, you might not need that bass presence. It's probably gonna get in the way of what your bass guitarist is doing and it's probably gonna do more harm than good. So starting here and then having to intentionally undo that or open up those frequencies has worked really well for me and it's helped me to avoid uh, what I ran into a lot when I was first starting to design sounds, which was I designed sounds at home with headphones on or in my studio monitors and I think that they sounded great. And then I'd get into a venue with subwoofers and room noise and uh, all of this reverb and my sounds would be way too bassy. They'd get in the way of bass guitar, they'd uh, feed back in the room. It was just way too much low end that would build up and get overpowering. So I'd end up getting turned down in the mix. I'd lose what the pad was actually doing on the top end because it was just too much bass. Now, we've talked about bass and that's sort of that rumbly, boomy sort of sound. But if your pads feel like they're just lacking any clarity and they're sort of competing with the guitars for space, oftentimes what you need to look for is problematic frequencies in the low mid range. This is between 200 hertz and 500 hertz, maybe even up to 1K. So you can apply a cut there. So here's with it boosted so you can sort of hear that fundamental frequency and it's a very powerful, uh, noticeable frequency to the human ear. And if you've got a lot going on here and you're changing chords, it can really quickly get sort of muddy and lose all its clarity. So if you just apply a cut here, even a subtle one, I'm right in between 200 and 500, then it really thins things out nicely. You don't lose the power of the top end and you can even have some low end energy below these frequencies but it's not going to be near as likely to build up in the room and lose your clarity. It's not going to compete as much with the other instruments in your band. So these are a couple frequencies that you can really go to pretty quickly if you're noticing that your patches aren't translating in a live room, in your auditorium, your church sanctuary, whatever venue you're playing in. You can open up the EQ plugin and really quickly uh, just accentuate these frequencies first, boost them, and see what doesn't sound good in the room. And then once you've identified that, then you can do the opposite. You can apply some cuts until those frequencies aren't popping out in the way that you don't want them to. If you're using Mainstage for your worship key sounds, then you have to make sure to sign up to our weekly newsletter. We send out free Mainstage patches and tutorials to everybody on that email list every single Wednesday. Plus, when you sign up, you get immediate access to all the previous free patches of the week. That's over a year's worth of free patches. So go ahead and check out the link in the description. If this video was helpful to you, leave a comment, let us know, and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next main stage tutorials. Thanks for watching and have a great day.